Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, welcome to Postscript. I'm Hannah Connor, and I'm here with Pastor Dan, who has just preached an awesome message on the sanctity of life. We've got a lot of questions for you, so let's jump into it. Okay. Um, to start off, let's talk about the medical questions a little bit. We had some questions about birth control, in vitro fertilization, Plan B. Can you share your thoughts with us, or maybe point to some resources that would be helpful? Sure. Um, the people who have come to me with concerns about these sort of things are coming out of a concern over what we talked about today. It is contraception in some way abortive? Mm -hmm. And the answer to that is no. Uh, you know, contraception, be before, outside of conception, that's the purpose of a contraceptive device. So there's no concern there. Now, when you get into matters of different types of contraceptive devices and which ones are abortive and which ones are not, mm -hmm. I'm not a doctor. Mm -hmm. The best thing to do is to talk to your doctor. Right. Uh, in vitro fertilization and uh, other matters of how technology impacts human reproduction, mm -hmm. those are big, big questions. Right. And uh, I can't honestly say that I've given lots and lots of thought to that particular aspect of this. And so the resources that I would recommend, which I think are excellent, would be CareNet. Mm -hmm. The people there have thought about this a lot, and I know they speak from a biblical perspective. And Focus on the Family is another resource uh, that uh, I would encourage anyone to consult with questions about this. Great. That's really helpful. <clears throat> so you painted a great, really clear picture for us today of um, why life has value. Mm -hmm. And how does what you talked about in your sermon relate to the death penalty? Another good, good question. And I, a, a legitimate question because sanctity of life certainly extends to matters of, of the death penalty. Um, I would say this. I would encourage every viewer, every listener to consider what are the ramifications of a holistic approach to sanctity of life. Is it inconsistent to, on the one hand, be opposed to abortion but for the death penalty? Or uh, does uh, consistency demand that we be opposed to both of these? Uh, that's a question worth wrestling over. And uh, again, lots of good resources out there. Focus on the family being another one that I would recommend uh, for people to delve into scripture and decide on their own. Yeah, that's good. One of the ways I think a lot of Christians engage with the issue of abortion is in the political arena. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that the best way, do you think, to engage with the issue? I wouldn't necessarily call it the best way. I think it is one of many ways that we can engage. Um, if you can engage in the political arena in a knowledgeable, helpful, Christ-like way, mm -hmm. yeah, do it. I mean, that, that's a privilege we have as citizens of this country, that we're allowed to participate in the process. However, if uh, politics is one of those things that brings out the worst in you, find other ways. There, th there are other ways to be a constructive part mm -hmm. of this whole thing uh, beyond politics, but if it, it is certainly a legitimate way, yeah. Great. You dealt a lot or, or dwelt a lot on sexuality in this sermon, and so we got a question asking for a specific reference um, in the Bible that would prohibit sex outside of marriage. Okay. Um, this fall, we are going to be taking up uh, the matter of human sexuality in depth. We've got a sermon series coming up. The whole series is going to be devoted to that issue. Um, I think considering the parameters we're working with here, mm -hmm. um, we would do better to wait until we got to that point where a fuller explanation, mm -hmm. uh, fuller um, opportunity to discuss 
that, that'll be the best place. Okay, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, well then, let's talk about the action step uh -huh. that you gave us, which was caring for the unborn by fulfilling God's plan um, for sexuality. And now, a lot of us, that wasn't a super intuitive action step, something that we would think would directly impact this issue. Sure. Talk me through that. Well, um, as I mentioned in the sermon, the vast majority of individuals who have an abortion are unmarried mm -hmm. women. Uh, it is a reasonable, logical step that if individuals are in the bonds of marriage, that is going to then diminish that number uh, of abortions. It, it's certainly not going to solve the issue, and none of the things that I suggested are going to completely solve it. They are simple steps that anyone can take. Uh, engaging in sexual activity outside of marriage runs the risk every time of a pregnancy, and uh, many times it can be unwanted. So the potential is there. If we can just avoid that scenario altogether, I think all the better for the unborn. We have one last question, and I think um, that it serves to illustrate what a real life, uh, what a real life situation it is that we're talking about. It's not kind of like a theological uh, notion that affects real people in mm -hmm. devastating ways. And that question is, what about abortion in cases of rape or incest? Okay, well, you're absolutely right. Uh, that question does highlight the multi-dimensional aspect of this whole issue. You, you can't just come at it biblically or theologically or politically or in terms of ethics. Uh, there's a lot involved in there, which ramps up the complication factor in a big, big way. My counsel to someone in this situation would be uh, to follow what CareNet recommends um, on their website. Avoid haste. That, that, that's really their big message. Don't, don't act reflexively. Mm -hmm. By no means am I in any way diminishing the pain, the revulsion, uh, all of that associated with rape and incest. Those are horrible, terrible things. And as a man, you know, I, I have to be very careful about uh, what I presume to know about those things, which is not a lot. Um, but I think it is good advice to move slowly and carefully and prayerfully to talk to people who have given a lot of thought and have a lot of experience in dealing with these things. People who are rooted in the Word of God, who walk with the Lord. They're not just offering up psychological or just theological advice mm -hmm. or simply medical. Um, th these are persons who've thought about it from a lot of different angles and uh, I think it would be well worth anyone's time to consult them, not only for the decision about abortion, but how to deal with all of the trauma right. associated with that. I mean, it goes way beyond the conception of the child. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's the uh, uh, psychological uh, issues to be addressed. There, there may be physical issues to be addressed. And so uh, get help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. Sure. Dan, for answering these questions and for tackling um, such, a, such a tricky subject. You bet. Thank you for joining us for Postscript, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.